23rd regular meeting of the 2017-2018 Common Council. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So much in life depends on our attitude. The way we choose to see things and respond to others makes all the difference. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are 16 present. Uh, next, we'll move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. Next, we'll go on to the approval of the minutes from our last city council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I'm making a uh, motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to Mayor's appointments. And joining us uh, today is Assistant City Attorney Thomas Cameron. Thomas. Thank you. Um, Honorable members of the Common Council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your confirmation. Trent Romer to the Mayor's International Committee. That will lie over. Thomas Michael to the Mayor's International Committee. That will also lay over. Uh, next item is uh, public forum. City Clerk. I, there are three people from here to speak tonight. The first one, Mike Burnett. Mike Burnett, 1925 South 26th Street. Thank you, you'll have five minutes. All right. January 14th, 2014, Sheboygan Press Editorial. It might be tempting for the city of Sheboygan to throw in the towel and rid itself of the 72-year-old armory building. The armory is, after all, in need of expensive repairs, and, those are, and there are those who argue its useful life is at an end. That kind of thinking is a mistake. The city should take a step back and thoroughly examine all of its options, particularly know that now that a citizens group has come forward in its hope of revitalizing this, the facility. The Army Foundation, hey, Mr. Peters, wants to partner with the city to make the Army a viable operation after Spaceport Sheboygan vacates the facility in February and moves to the South Pier District. Couple more pages of that, and bottom line is, they're saying, wow, we got this group, work with them, and um, we even have Mayor Mike sitting in there saying, hey, we're going to do everything we can work for them. Work for them. I don't remember anybody ever talking to me. I don't remember anybody ever asking a question. And it's like, I was just asked, why don't you support us in the group that's stepping forward to save the armory? I do. I support everything that saves that building. I even support... Um, the Crawford group, who I, I just came to my attention, that their original thought was to save the building, and they got steered the other way. And it's like, and they're open to either. And then when you do this stuff, everybody, oh, we're going to referendum. We're going to find out what the city wants. Ha, 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 city. They don't care. And it's like, remember the marina? It's not there because we had an advisory referendum, and we voted against it but it's there. When you have an advisory referendum, that's meaning you don't care. A school district never had an advisory referendum asking for millions. They want the millions. They don't want to find out if you care. And right here, everything gets funneled through finance. This has nothing to do with finance. We never ask for a penny. They're not asking for a penny. And it's like, I mean, we have government money coming down, I mean, for, for protecting the building and saving it. We won that argument back in the day, but we couldn't go forward because the landlord was totally against it. They wanted apartments, and that landlord's the city. They created a sham committee that basically came up with a structure, and it's somehow the armory has to reflect downtown. It's empty. It reflects downtown. We want that changed. We want it fixed. We want it seated. A group came in on their own money, own money, said that they're going to come in and fix it. Told you what's wrong with the roof, what's wrong with the floor. You laughed them out of here. Said that's not a proposal. My, one of my own aldermen is saying that nobody in his district, District 6, I think that's what I am. Is that what I am, Henry? Yes, you are. That's what I am. Nobody in District 6 is for the armory. I'm District 6. How much more District 6 can I be? If you Northsiders can't take care of the armory, us Southsiders will. 
Jeez, boys, I mean, this thing has been going on forever. And it's like everybody here wants to get it done. I'm not against apartments, I'm not against whatever, but everybody that's offering apartments, they're doing it because you're refusing to work with them if they don't. And it's that simple. I mean, I get cut off soon. I'm always at random on here. Everybody else will get to talk. It's what it is. Hit me like a pinata. But I'll say this, Mr. Sorensen, you want to know what the people think? You get a real referendum on there. And while we're doing it, why don't we open it up and get that armory open on a Saturday and do it really quick and get people in there and tag on everything what the price is going to cost to fix it. And then we can tag on there what we have lined up. And I know, I mean, like Jennifer, and him, they have it nailed on historical preservation. We went that route, but it's like we stopped because... What can you do when somebody's basically you can't resuscitate somebody who has no no resuscitate thing? Several of you are uh, aldermen have helped a lot in here. I don't want to call you out by name because people will be mad at you. But bottom line is, people have helped through the years to try to keep this going. And people right now, all you're interested in getting it done, getting a check mark done. If you want to get it done, open it up and talk to people. And the other note on is. Get a real listing of what you need and want out of the building. I mean, my God, you can't have the people who want to kill it decide how you're going to use it. And it's like, and right now, you have a bazillion questions. They've been asked, and b bottom line, you got funneled back in and the lull of you're going to go on this referendum. According to our city administrator, you might be getting the final proposal in two weeks, all right? And this is as of the last finance meeting. That's part of it in there. And it's like, this is going on. You're shooting two rockets down the same sled. Excuse me, One Mike. Of them is, yep. Your time's up. All right. Thank you. No applause. <laughs> Dane Schaefer, please. Uh, Dane, Dane Schaefer, 3728 South 13th Street. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. Mike, if you can wait like another two hours before you call next time so I don't have to follow your act. It's, <laughs> I can't be that entertaining, unfortunately, but thank you. Um, so I'm going to start, uh, obviously I'm here about the Armory. As a member of the Armory Community Project, I'm going to start with some updates, um, what we've been working on in the last two weeks. Um, this, uh, actually tomorrow, uh, we have a meeting with uh, the County Property Committee to discuss a uh, shared, uh, shared parking plan. Um, we received uh, last week a letter of interest uh, from First Business Bank of Madison uh, expressing interest in pursuing the purchase of the tax credits we have laid out in our plan, which amount to an estimated $4.6 million. Um, we have another letter uh, from Baker Tilly, um, Donald Bernards, who's a CPA at, at, ba at Baker Tilly, um, expressing his professional opinion that we would qualify and are eligible for the federal new market tax credits that we laid out in our plan. Um, we also today uh, filed our articles um, of incorporation and we've uh, had our bylaws drafted. Um, these are all things that uh, have been laid out in, in the agreement uh, that you guys are working on for us. We are trying to put our best foot forward. Um, what I'm going to ask you for tonight is, is the same. Um, I want to start with that resolution. Um, as I said a couple of weeks ago, I have uh, a number of concerns with specific details in the resolution. I feel like this whole process has been fairly rushed. Um, however, at that pace, I don't think that we're going to find the time to discuss those, uh, those details. Um, I think number seven uh, specifically probably would make it, uh, it would be very, very difficult for us to 
properly leverage the tax credits that we talk about uh, in the way number seven is laid out. But my point is that I believe we can fix that by making one change to the whole thing, and uh, that is provision 11. Uh, the city administrator shall have the authority to negotiate within the parameters, but shall also have the flexibility to negotiate additional items as needed. Um, I spoke with an older person today about this. He felt that the intent is that we can negotiate all of these terms, um, and uh, he reached out to Chuck Adams as well, who uh, I guess agreed with him. I reached out to my personal attorney, who felt that um, that the word within means that those are the boundaries. That is the um, the least strict that these terms can be. Uh, so it's my concern that we can't negotiate the details here if we keep it uh, as is. So all I'm asking is that we remove the word within from the 11th item and um, I will be satisfied that we can then negotiate uh, the, the terms and I guess just to help uh, city administrators this is with it removed city administrators should have the authority to negotiate the parameters but shall also have the flexibility to negotiate additional items as needed um, so I think that would be a great help and uh, I would appreciate that um, finally uh, my invisible soapbox um, as a common council uh, it's your duty to make tough decisions uh, to be fair to both of the developers involved uh, in this, you guys need to make a clear decision on this. Um, city employees are hired to help execute the plans of the Common Council, the plans that you guys set forth. Um, they're not hired to make these decisions. You guys are elected by the people to make these decisions. It's unfair to rest, that, uh, rest these tough decisions on their shoulders and it's unfair to your constituents to relinquish the authority they entrusted you with. This is what you are elected to do. Vote with what you think is right. Vote with what you think your constituents want. Um, but if you can't do either of those, uh, then, I, then it needs to go down the ladder and give the power to the people, not up the ladder and give it to a, a small handful of people. So you need to make this decision and make it clear so that the city knows what direction you, our elected officials, want us to go in. Thank you. Thank you. Jennifer Lurkey. <coughs> Jennifer Lurkey, 111 Highland Drive, Glen Beulah. Thank you. You'll have five minutes. Thank you. Um, tonight I want to throw some numbers out there. I think it's an angle that we haven't looked at this, um, these two proposals at yet. So bear with me, it works better in a PowerPoint. Um, Portscape Apartments was really the first set of apartments to happen in Sheboygan. There's 88 units there, one point, or sorry, $11.8 million, which roughly equates to $134,000 a unit. The rents there range from $1,150 a month to $1,600 a month. Encore was sort of the next in line here in Sheboygan. There's 81 units, it's $11 million. That too equates to about $135,000 a unit. Their rents range from $925 a month to $1,415 a month. Now, in talking with Encore today, they've been open for six months now. They're only at 83% occupancy. Building's not full. Neither are the retail spaces on the first floor. High Point is the one that's under construction right now. 91 units, $15 million. That one's a tick higher. It's $165,000 a unit. And I've been told by the investors there that they're going very, very high end. Um, so you would expect a modest upward tick there. Their starting range is $900 a unit. They're going all the way up to $2,500 a unit for the rents. You have a proposal in front of you tonight that is $213,000 a unit. Those numbers don't add up. They don't make sense. Even with 20% down, 5% interest, the mortgage alone is about $1,100 a unit. 
You add in insurance, taxes, utilities, property manager, garbage, vacancies, cleaning repairs, you might as well double that $1,100 to $2,200 a unit. Those numbers still don't make sense when you're charging seven or $800 for an affordable unit up to $2,500 a unit. We ask you tonight to vote nay on 6.1. We ask you tonight to vote aye on 6.2. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to the mayor's announcements. For the last two and a half to three years, we've been using a program called Nextdoor. It uh, is a great program because it allows our citizens to talk to each other as well as for us to put information in front of them. Nextdoor just opened up a new service that they have available to our community and others, and that's to conduct polls. So I sent out an email a few weeks ago. We put a, a poll in there on the armory and proposed two questions. and. Um, we, had, we have 3,767 users on Nextdoor right now. There were 279 votes cast. It's approximately 8% participation. We had about 50 people that joined up during that period so that they could vote. And the votes came in 170 for the armory and 109 for the apartments. About a 60-40 split on that. So just wanted to give the results. The poll stay out there for a while and uh, we'll see how uh, things come out. I also like to make you aware of the, uh, and remind you about the Shape Sheboygan survey. Uh, this survey is being used to help us implement our uh, strategic plan and it'll help us with uh, the action steps that we have to uh, decide on for 2019 and 2020. And that will be open through March 11th. If you'd like to take that survey, you can just go to the city website. There's a banner ad, just click on it and you can take the survey. It'll take about 10 minutes. And we also do have paper copies at the library and the clerk's office, and you can fill those out and turn those in at those locations. Um, the next thing is, I just want to remind you that landlord training is coming up. This is an annual class that we run. It'll be April 24th at 5.30 at the Sheboygan Police Department. Registrations are due by April 10th. And last and most importantly, I'd like to call up Peter Pittner at this time. And uh, I've got a proclamation to honor Peter's work as a citizen in our community. Peter Pittner is one of the longest serving board members of, and presidents of Maywood's history. Although he will remain on the advisory board until 2020, he is stepping down as president after four years. He joined the board in 2008, bringing with him a valuable technical knowledge and links to other environmental organizations, such as the Sheboygan River Basin Partnership and the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. During his tenure at Maywood, they went through some major changes, including a complete reconstruction of the strategic plan, a major staffing transition, a partnership with Camp Wicota that now allows hundreds of kids to experience Maywood each year. Pete was instrumental in the strategic planning process and actively involved in guiding Maywood as it evolved. While Pete's been involved in the big picture issues, he has not ignored the day-to-day -day activities at Maywood. He's participated in citizen-based monitoring opportunities, provided technical know-how and water depth testing for the pond restoration project. He served on the Banquet Summer Solstice Committee and Flapjack Day Committee and volunteered for Earth Ride, wishing for winter and other events. Thank you, Pete, for the innumerable hours that you've given to help make Maywood what it is today. Now, therefore, I, Mike Vanderstein, by virtue of the authority vested me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, I hereby proclaim March 18th as Peter Pittner Day and, join, and ask all citizens uh, to join in the celebration of his accomplishments at Maywood's Flapjack Festival. Peter, thank you so very much.
thank you very much, Mayor Vandersteen. R real briefly, I appreciate the honor, but I would just like to say I'm just one of many, many volunteers out at Maywood who donate hundreds of hours, hundreds and hundreds of hours every year to make Maywood what it is. And Maywood is a city park, as I'm sure you all know, and we appreciate the support we get to the, from the city. Um, particularly, we'd like to recognize Jill Curlin, who I see is not here tonight, the Director of Parks and Forestry, who's been a great partner for us. Uh, recognize Alderman Sorensen, who's a member of our advisory board and has been very active in the committee. So thank you for your support, uh, both financially and with your staff members. Um, it is a city park, uh, Flapjack Days is coming up. Uh, you support it, I would like to invite you all. It'd be great to see you all out there on the 18th. So again, thank you very much. Next we'll go on with communications. Item 2.1 will be referred to the Public Works Committee. Under the consent agenda, it'll include items 3.1 through 3.14. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Make a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'd ask the clerk to call the roll. Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, um, four point one will lie over, as uh, well as four point two will also lie over. Items four point three through four point eight will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, um, items five point one through five point six will be referred to various committees. Alderperson Donahue. Um, if I could just, uh, <clears throat> with respect to uh, 5.2, um, which uh, relates to the uh, resolution uh, to uh, refer this matter uh, for a referendum. I know that, <clears throat> as is obvious from speakers tonight and their <coughs> nights, uh, this is an emotional issue for all sorts of folks. I do remember Alder Sorensen, however, asking us to keep in mind ABBA and making sure that we give things, things a chance. I have oh. for Alder Sorensen <laughs> an Very ABBA nice. album that I am going to confer with the greatest respect from our family to you and just keep on trucking. <laughs> Can I respond, Mr. Mayor? <laughs> Please go ahead. Well, I don't even know. <laughs> If I have a record player, <laughs> I sync this up with my Bluetooth. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Next, uh, under report of committees, item 6.1 is RC number 250 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom is reserved resolution 134 of 1718 by all the persons Donahue and Boren, authorizing the city staff to negotiate a developer's agreement between the city of Sheboygan and Scott Crawford, Inc. for the redevelopment of the former armory site and recommends passing the resolution. Alder person Donahue. Mayor, I move to accept, adopt, and pass uh, resolution 6.1. Second. And uh, if it's permissible to include 6.2 uh, in the same resolution um, for the reason that, uh, as we discussed pretty extensively at Finance and Personnel, <clears throat> what we're looking to do here um, is to take these two proposals, both of which seem to have great merit and both of which seem to have a number of questions that need to be explored in more detail to get proper answers. Um, the point of both 6.1 and 6.2 is to authorize the city administrator with whatever city staff is necessary to sit down and really negotiate <clears throat> uh, to the extent possible a developer's agreement that will set out the parameters of both projects. Um, so, um, the key word I think is negotiate, 
uh, I understand what Mr. Schaefer was saying with respect to 6.1. Those are pieces of the puzzle that probably do need to be addressed. The Crawford proposal is a more standard apartment development, developers <coughs> agreement proposal. We have done many of those in the past and we have an expertise in terms of negotiating the key and most important elements of that kind of agreement. The idea is, is that depending on the results of our staff in terms of getting this additional information, answering questions, and coming forth with a plan, that when we as council decide which proposal we wish to accept, we will really know what we're talking about. We will have questions answered and we'll have a plan. Now, my sense is, and I could be wrong, my sense is that um, our city administrator will come back and he will say both of these plans are viable and here are the, the good parts and the bad parts of each or only the good parts or whatever. Um, but it will, when we finally do make our decision, uh, unless it goes to referendum, when we finally do make our decision, um, it will be fully informed and we can feel very comfortable about the fact that we've really looked into this in great detail. I know speakers have been concerned about how long this has taken and so on and so forth. I can say, having been on the council since um, the original Armory Foundation came together, the city has really exercised what I consider due diligence in terms of trying to find a proposal that's not only good for the Armory, but that's good for our citizens, that's good for the city itself. And it's a tough question. And I frankly don't have the answers right now to say whether one proposal is better than the other. I think they're both viable. I think they're both interesting. I just want to know more. I think we all do. And that's the idea of between, for both 6.1 and 6.2, to accept, adopt, pass the resolution directing the city administrator to, to um, negotiate agreements and then come back to us. So I think if we can vote yes on both of them, we have a really pretty clear path forward. That means we will have made good decisions about the very best way to deal with this great big building that we have. Alder Sorensen, you made your second prior to the uh, full my, motion being put on was, the floor. It was my second. Was Jim. You did? Yeah, it's okay. I, uh, I agree to include them both, so I'll second. Very good. We have a motion on the floor. Under further discussion, Alder Person Trester. I would like the word within stricken from uh, number 11 on 6.2. Is there a second? I just did, second. Okay, we have a, an amendment to the motion to stricken that one word from 6.2 within. 6.1 no, both are on the floor. Okay. Is there any discussion on that motion? Um, Alderperson uh, Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd ask our city administrator if that's going to hamstring at him at all in his negotiations, if that would be removed. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm satisfied with, it, with the change that's being recommended. Alderperson Holshue. Um, I just wanted, I, I'm not in favor of, of um, we have two different things going on here at one time. I'm not in favor of combining them. I would like them voted on separately. Make a motion to do that. That means the third motion, uh, or the for third thing on the floor that we have motions in second. We have an amendment right now. We have to deal with the amendment first. The amendment to take 11 off. Right. To take that word 11. out of that one item. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know how my light stayed on. Okay, Alderperson Savaglio. Asked and answered. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, the motion on the floor is just on the amendment. Would the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes, two noes. Motion passes. We're back to the main motion. Is there any further discussion on the main motion? Alderperson Sorensen. Um, this is, I'm gonna offer another amendment. I'm gonna move that we separate 6.1 and 6.2. Um, I believe that if we wanna discuss 
um, you know, each proposal individually. I think that will be much more cohesive with our, our discussion also. I'm concerned about just the time with city <coughs> staff. If we're going to be talking about <coughs> two, two different proposals at once, um, I'd like to make sure that city staff is not working in different directions as well. Um, and I just also want to make sure that we're negotiating in good faith um, for, for whatever proposal that we choose. So you're asking to divide the question? Yep. Okay. I second so that. So we'll, um, we'll take 6.1 first then. Uh, further discussion on 6.1, Alderperson Donahue. We don't have to vote on that? We, we thought that we got to vote on gotta it. Go from, vote. A separate, from a parliamentary uh, procedure point of view, um, so I take it then, is the motion to divide debatable? Just divide the, the question into 6.1 and 6.2. Is it debatable? I believe so, isn't it? I think so. Well, yeah. on the agenda. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> so I would speak against this. Um, here's my fear. Um, if, if there are not two yes votes, then we've made the decision. Mm -hmm. And we've made it without the information that we need. And I, so I would, I would urge, I mean, if, if we're going to vote, yeah, I'm very comfortable voting yes on 6.1 and yes on 6.2, and I think that's really the way we need to do it. But the way this is structured, if 6.1 passes and 6.2 doesn't, we have a plan. And we have it without the additional information that we're looking for, I am afraid. And I just think that it makes sense for us to take these two good proposals, both of which need additional work, additional information, additional negotiations, and for us to forward those to the, to the city administrator. So that was my intent on bringing these together, not to support either one over the other. It's just from the workings of the best way to approach solving this problem. I think pulling these two together <coughs> Is, is the way we should do it. So I'm going to vote against dividing the question at this point. Uh, in my past history, we usually don't vote on this, but there's a motion on the floor, and Thomas is checking into dividing the question and what the proper Robert's Rules of Order ruling would be. So we'll, we'll let him can finish looking. require a vote. It does? It does require a vote. Okay. Now we'll continue with discussion. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I would just concur with what Alderman Donahue said is that uh, reading through both of these proposals, I think they both have merit. And I think the city administrator should go through and uh, do a development agreement on each one and then let us decide. And I would agree with Alderman Donahue that if we, if we just vote on one and not the other, we're not getting a full development agreement to, uh, to vote on. So I think it would be premature uh, to divide this question. Uh, so I'm going to vote against dividing. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. Um, I find this the um, uh, most confusing and backwards way of, of doing things that, that um, I've ever been part of in my tenure with the council. We've got two diametrically opposed um, developers. One wants to restore and save a uh, historical building. One wants to have it torn down and replace it with some other development. And we're going to move forward with two diametrically opposed groups, come up with some um, developer's agreement, and assume that the people that are negotiating the developer's <laughs> agreement are going to be um, unbiased towards both of them and give them a fair opportunity and do this you know, fair and square. And then we're going to bring it back to this, this body and say, OK, which one do you want to do? Do you want to do this one or this one? Um, you know, Alderman Donahue has already stated that she thinks both may have merit, but they're lacking in some uh, additional detail. Um, I thought both of the, the plans that were presented um, lacked some significant um, detail for me to support either one of them. Um, but what I think we need to do is we need to figure out, does the building have historical significance? Is it worth saving? Does the community support that? And should we vote to go that way? Or 
does the community want to have it torn down? It has no historical significance, and we want just the future revenue or the tax revenue and the development that comes with it and, and, and move that way. We need to make a decision as a body which way we're going to go, then have the city administrator work with a developer that has that, um, that goal in mind and, and come up with a developer's agreement. To have these two opposing views and to say all we're doing is stalling a decision on which way we're going to go, tear it down or save it and restore it. So I, I think we're putting the cart way before the horse in this instance, and I think it's just a ridiculous and goofy way to do things. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Trester. I think since we started out with two separate resolutions, I would like to see it stay two separate resolutions. Thank you. Alderperson Sorensen. I feel like with this, we can't be driving in both lanes, kind of going down the street. I think really tonight is, should be the kind of the decision night where the council, you know, puts our boots on and makes an adult decision um, to which way that we want to go. Um, I feel like <coughs> we've had a lot of feedback from a lot of community members and from the folks that completed the next door uh, poll. 61% chose to keep the armory to do something with the property, 39 voted to remove it. Um, I've had plenty of conversations with my constituents. Um, I've got their feedback, so I'm confident in the way that I'll be voting tonight on this. So. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Donahue. Um, the only problem I see is that if we, in fact, decide tonight that we're going to you know, open door number one or door number two, um, and we decide that we're going to do the first project, and we've decided, and that's what you want to do. And then we do need to negotiate a few things. I, I, I hope that folks will be supportive of that. Send it to the city administrator and comes back and said, you know, after due diligence, it's just not going to work. And then where are we? We're right back where we started. And Alder Bellinger, respectfully, this isn't the most convoluted, idiotic thing that this council has ever done. <laughs> and it's close. So it's got to uh, rank up there. Top five. So, so this, as, as I'm looking at this, this is just a real rational way for us to look at both proposals, fill in the information, and then come back with a professional recommendation as to which one is more, I have, I have great concerns about the, both proposals succeeding. I just do. And maybe after negotiating an agreement with the city administrator, those concerns will go away. But if we choose one over the other tonight, we're done. That's it. We're, we're done. And I just don't think that that's a, you know, could you just stop? I, you know, your antics, sir, are mildly interesting, but I'm, I'm really... Tired of Mike, tired. please put that away. Oh, sorry. Signs aren't allowed in the in the chambers. Okay. Yeah, you know, just a, a a little bit of courtesy, even on the part of the public, I think is totally possible in this world. And the 16 of us who sit here are used <clears throat> to some discourteous behavior. But I, I, for one, sir, shan't laugh at it. Thank you very much. So, in any event, <clears throat> that's why I'm suggesting that we forward <coughs> both of these. And, in one, and we, that may, I mean, if, if we do divide the question, that may, in fact, happen anyway. I'm just greatly concerned that it won't. And then I think we won't have done our jobs. Thank you for and those that comments. Is true, sir. That is true. Alderperson Savaglio. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I sell homes for a living, and when I get multiple <coughs> offers, I present them all to the seller, and I say, let's see what we can do to negotiate a better price. Let's put the, pit them against each other to see what best outcome we can get, and I want to do the same thing for this city. Thank you. Thank you. Alderperson Holshu. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have, um, I want to have a gentle conversation about what I think I'm hearing is we want to hear more facts regarding 6-1 and 6-2. And by implementing that, 
hopefully we'll get some honest answers back. Do we want, do, do we then in fact, I just want to get my verbiage correct, what about entertaining the idea of not putting all this onto <coughs> our city, but to enforce a referendum that decides if we keep the armory or not, and then take this step after we've heard from the people, we've heard from our mayor of what that <coughs> survey has said, but perhaps a referendum would say get rid of the armory and build a project. I personally am not in favor of sub more subsidized housing in the city. I think we have plenty as it is right now. I'm just entering a dialogue. I'm not making a motion. I'm just wondering where would a referendum sit with your thoughts, Alderman Donahue, on this? You want to keep combine them. Would it not make sense to do a referendum or is, are you seeing that that wouldn't be the way to go? Because I don't know that we should put this in. I have, I have concerns. I think the people need to make the decision, not, not um, non-elected officials. Alderperson Wolf is up next. Thank you, Mayor. Don't you get to answer? I want to compliment everybody because this, this, this subject matter has been discussed for, for quite a few years. It's had lifelines thrown at it where we thought we had opportunities. To, to save it, whether it was Spaceport, um, Seas, or even the D-League. We all were excited during those times. Um, people that I've talked to were also excited because they thought that it could be saved. Um, we, we've also heard how the city tried using it and it just declined over time because, let's face it, the school systems added on to their, uh, to their you know, made their gyms much larger. We no longer really had the need for the armory um, over the decades and again over time things faded away things weren't being done there community groups weren't using it. Um, it, it it was used back in the day just like any other park or any other event um, building but it's the city's and it's the city's cost to maintain it to 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 run it to operate it to to keep it alive and as we've seen throughout the city of Sheboygan We've seen deterioration, whether it's the roads, other buildings, or the armory. It's just another example of how we haven't been taking care of things. I personally want to, would like to con, would like you to consider that again we keep 6.1 and 6.2 together, so that they can both be looked at together objectively, like two contractors bidding um, for a project, and the project is. What's the best for the city of Sheboygan? What's the best for when we want to live, work, and play here? So when we talk about this, we're not talking about something new. We're talking about something that's been done year over year for decades and decades and decades, and we can agree to disagree all day long until the cows come home. What's going on? But our city officials, our, our, our management, everybody deals with this stuff days, day in and day out. They've made good decisions, and what we're asking is to keep 6.1 and 6.2 together. We look at them together but separately. We can make a good decision. Again, it's to get information. It's the right thing to do because if you think about it, we had six contractors before, and we whittled it down to two. We whittled it down to one which was to save the armory, whether we agreed if it's going to work, if they have all this all of the credentials and the monies and everything, whether they're going to be successful or not, we agreed that that's one of them that we're going, to, we're going to support and look at. We also looked at the other contractor that basically was looking to tear it down and put something else there that's going to bring in tax revenue. So I think we've got the best of both worlds here and we're giving, our, giving them the opportunity to come back, answer questions, validate that they can be successful because we don't want to have a sore thumb down there that's something that's not successful. We want something that's going to be successful. So we want to basically make sure that we, we vet this out and ask the questions, get the background, so that either group can be successful and we can support them moving forward. So I'm going to again ask that we're here to make the city of Sheboygan better. That's why we're voted in to make those hard decisions, 
pull our pants up as I believe so, uh, Alderman I said Sorsen. boots. Boots. Either way, <laughs> pants, boots. Either way, it's all good. <clears throat> it's all got to work together. It all takes a whole bunch of people to make this work. So my point is, please keep 6-1 and 6-2 together. Let's try to get this going. Let's support both of them and let the, let the information, the data, figure it out for us. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Alder Person Boring. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as I've said before, I've read over, if you want to call them the perspectives, perspectives of these, uh, both of these projects, and I'll tell you the concerns I have on both. Number one, on the, uh, on the Crawford project, my concern there is, uh, are they going to be able to get the financing from the bank? And if indeed the comments that Ms. Lurkey made earlier about the cost of those apartments, uh, going forward with the developer's agreement and uh, the Crawford people working with their bank, that's going to come to fruition. They're either going to, their, plan, their financial plan down there is either going to work or it's not going to work. And what I want to find out when I read, when I read over their, their proposal is, is it going to fly with their, with, their, with their financial people? And on the, on the, uh, on the other one, on the uh, Sheboygan group, my concern there is you can get all the fancy dancy grants you want to fix that thing up. What I want to see, and I brought this up at the Finance Committee, is I want to see a tax attorney or a CPA uh, come up with a business plan, of probably a five-year business plan, on how they're going to keep the doors open once it's fixed. Once the place is fixed up, that's my concern with their proposal. When I was in business, when I was either dealing with, uh, with the Small Business Administration or my, or my local bank, Whenever I went in and asked for money, I had to have a business plan, a very detailed business plan, and it, and it took me some money to get the business plan, but I had to have it in order to get financing. So again, what I want to find out with the Sheboygan Group, it's very important, is I've got to find out what's going to happen if, if indeed they can fix it up and open it, how they're going to keep the doors open, and see if the expenses that they're projecting are realistic. So those are the concerns I have on both of them, but I still want both of them to have the city administrator go through the uh, development agreement process. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Okay, the motion on the floor is to divide the question. Uh, see no li other lights. Will the clerk call the roll? voting to divide to leave them both separate. Right? Correct. It's to divide them. To have two different votes. And I can change my vote which way? Yes. I Do you want to change your vote? Yep. I can change it. Do you, I I don't want them heard together. You're wanting to vote I to divide them. Correct. Yes. Okay. Got it. Aye. All right. Anticipation. Seven eyes, nine nose. Motion to divide fails. So the both items are on the uh, floor right now with a motion to approve both of them. Is there any further discussion on that motion that's on the floor? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll for passage on the motion. I'm sorry, would you repeat the motion? We're voting on this time to what? 6.1 and 6.2 to accept and adopt and pass the resolutions. And, and 6.2 is as amended to take that 11. Okay, but this will, this, this will be the, a vote that they're going to be combined? Yes. Okay, thank you. So you're, taking bo you're voting for both of them.
13 eyes, three is no's. Motion passes. Item 6.3 is RC number 252 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolution uh, n number 146 of 1718 by all the persons Holshue, Trester, and Damro, authorizing the city staff to negotiate a developer's agreement between the city of Sheboygan and TDK Group LLC for the development of the former armory site and recommends filing the document. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you. I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Uh, under discussion, Alder Person Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I unfortunately couldn't be at finance when this went before them. My, my concern is if, um, why is it that they are not being considered? I know there was a scoring um, on that <coughs> spreadsheet that we initially got. There wasn't any scoring, and when I asked some questions, they said that because there wasn't any, and then I got that same sheet that said, all these scoring numbers, but yet to check into each of the developments was removed from that sheet. So I'm not quite sure how that stands, but I'm I'm wondering because um, why why are we why did the finance department feel that this should be filed and not it um, talked about and had an agreement made as well as those other two? If someone thank, could answer that question, thank you my for last that comment. Didn't get answered. Alder, who would like to respond? Alder Person Donahue. Um, <clears throat> the um, TDK proposal was uh, one to um, refurbish the um, armory as opposed to the armory project proposal, which had a substantial detail and a substantial financial plan. The TDK proposal did not. It appears that what the TDK proposal would do is as best as you can figure out from the proposal, which was clearly not a well-developed proposal with a lot of detail and a lot of information upon which we could make a judgment, or the committee who reviewed it. That's why it got the lowest score. Um, <clears throat> so uh, as I understand, it would be to kind of cocoon off the main area of the armory and um, to use that uh, and not to use the rest of the building. Uh, and then the proprietors uh, would turn over the uh, daily operations to their daughter, um, who has done some concerts. And the business plan, as I understood from conversations, was one to three uh, major concerts a month uh, that would bring in one to 2,000 people. Um, the On its face, it was a failed proposal in that it had very little detail. Um, the total cost of the project, from what you could infer, was $750,000. Um, and it just uh, so clearly did not compete with any of the other proposals. I think that's why it got the lowest ranking. And there were no proponents at the meeting to argue why it was a good proposal. Thank you. Okay, if there's no other discussion, will the clerk call the roll, please? <clears throat> 14 ayes, 2 noes. Motion passes. Uh, moving on to other matters, we'll turn it over to the Assistant City Attorney. RO uh, number 307-17-18, submitting various license applications for the period beginning June 30th, 2018, December 31st, 2018, and June 30th, 2019. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. Next is a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion 
make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.85 sub 1 sub e Wisconsin stats where competitive bargaining reasons require a closed session for the possible sale of land in the new business park South Point Enterprise Campus for the sale of land in the Sheboygan <coughs> Business Center. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk call the roll for closed session? Rosemary. 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 Yeah, your name. Oh, don't we go on? Closed session. <clears throat> Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Uh, we'll take a three minute recess and we'll just to notify our residents at home that are watching on TV that will be adjourning in closed session. This will end our transmission for this evening. Thank you.